Hi, this is Don Crawley from SoundTraining.net. Today I'm going to show you how to configure a site-to-site -site VPN using two Cisco ASA security appliances. You use a site-to-site -site VPN when you have, say, two offices in different locations and you want an always-on connection between them. In the past, you might have leased a dedicated line, but today you usually just set up a VPN link, such as what you're presently seeing on screen. This video is based on Chapter 8 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide, 2nd Edition. You can follow along by purchasing a copy at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. I also have a free document available for you to download with the actual configs and companion network diagram at www.soundtraining.net slash L2L VPN configs. It does require registration, but there's no cost. I'm going to use the network diagram you're seeing now for the following configuration. You might want to pause the video for a moment and study the diagram. I'll be working on ASA01. ASA02 has already been configured. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, we've already configured the other firewall on the other end of the connection, so we're just going to be dealing with this one. But let's start a ping, a continuous ping, to the other PC. This PC is located on the inside subnet on the other side of the other firewall. And by setting a continuous ping, we'll be able to see as soon as the tunnel comes up and we have successfully configured the, the VP, VPN tunnel. So we'll do ping 192.168.102.6 with a minus T that makes it a continuous ping as you probably know and as you can expect the tunnel the ping will fail because we don't have the tunnel set up yet so now let's go to our ASA and we'll start configuring the the tunnel first of all we need to go into configuration mode so config T and now we're going to enable ISACAMP on the outside interface that ISACAMP is the handshake part of the configuration so we'll do crypto ISACAMP enable outside. Now we're going to do a couple of preliminary steps. First of all, we're going to set up our uh, network objects to identify our inside subnet and our partners inside subnet, our local and the remote inside subnet. Uh, we'll also configure an access control list to identify and permit the traffic flows from our inside subnet to the remote inside subnet, and we're going to configure the tunnel groups as well. So let's start by configuring the network objects. Object network net dash local. Net dash local is just a text string that I use. It's a name. I prefer to give them descriptive names so that I can look at it in a configuration later and immediately know what it's all about. We'll do subnet and we'll put in our subnet, which is 192.168.101.0. We have to put a mask with it, 255.255.255.0. Next, we'll do the remote subnet. This is the subnet on the inside network connected to the other firewall. So object network net dash remote. Again, just a text string, a name that I chose to give it. And subnet 192.168.102.0 with the same 24-bit mask. And there it is. We'll type exit just to come out of it. Not necessary for the configuration, but it does make it easier to, to see as we go through the configs. Next, we've got to build our access control list. This access control list is used to identify the traffic flows, identify and permit the traffic flows from our inside subnet to our partner's inside subnet. If you're not familiar with Cisco ASA access control list syntax, how they're built, please take a look at uh, our video. We have another video on our YouTube channel or on our website at www.soundtraining.net on how to do that. Pause this one, go watch that one, then come back to this one. So here we go with setting up the access control list. Access hyphen list outside underscore one underscore crypto map. Permit. IP traffic from the network identified in object net dash local going to the destination identified in object net dash remote. And that's our access control list. Next we've got to set up the tunnel group. One thing to think about. Access control lists are inside to inside, so that is our inside network to our partner's inside network. Tunnel groups and peers are outside to outside, 
So we're going to be connecting to our peers outside interface and referencing our peers outside interface. You'll see what I mean as we go through it. So let's go ahead and set up the tunnel group. Tunnel dash group 192.168.0.12. That is our peers outside address. Then we have to specify the type of IPsec tunnel. So it's type IPsec dash L2L. I know it looks like 121. You'd think they could have used capital L's. Maybe it stands for land to land. Uh, but just bear that in mind. Don't let the, the, the appearance fool you. It is L2L. Next we have to set up the attributes for the tunnel. So tunnel dash group 192.168.0.12 IP sec attributes. Notice what I did there. If you're not familiar with this, it's pretty cool. You can do command line completion just like on Unix and Linux systems by typing enough of the command that it's unique and then hitting the tab key. And that'll keep you from mistyping, fat fingering like I do. Go ahead and hit enter. Notice the prompt changes. Now we can enter our pre-shared key, which is pass 1234. I hope in production, of course, you'll use something considerably more robust than that. But bear in mind that whatever you do in, in setting up the tunnel groups, it's got to match on both ends of the connection. So your key has to match. The, the IP addresses have to be the peer's outside address. You don't have to set keep alives, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway, just in case you might want to. If you have weird network conditions or something, you may want to uh, vary this, but we'll do isokemp keep alive threshold 10 retry 2. That's the default setting. And then type exit. So now we've done the preliminary work. Now it's time to set up phase one. Phase one is the handshake. That is the key exchange. Phase two is actually setting up the tunnels. So we'll start by setting up the handshake, the key exchange. We'll be doing ISACAMP settings here. That's Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol, which is roughly synonymous with IKE, Internet Key Exchange. So here we go. Crypto, ISACAMP, Policy 10, Authentication, Pre-Share. Now, let me explain this. Crypto means we're invoking cryptographic services. ISACAMP means that we're doing the phase one stuff. Policy 10, that, that's just identifying the policy. And it could be any number between 1 and 65, 534, inclusive. Um, it's just a label saying that this is a grouping of settings. And the authentication says we're, how are we going to authenticate each other, and we're going to do it with a pre-shared key, which we already configured with the tunnel group. Next, we need to set our encryption. So we'll do crypto isocamp policy 10 encrypt 3 des. A lot of people are starting to use AES, but this is the default 3 des is. Next, we're going to set the hashing algorithm that we'll use. And we'll use SHA, secure hash algorithm, crypto isocamp policy 10 hash SHA. MD5 is also supported. SHA supports uh, a slightly longer key length, so it's a little more robust. And finally, the Diffie-Hellman group, which is actually used for the, the uh, key exchange. So crypto ISA Kemp policy 10 group 2. Most important thing is these settings have to match on both ends. Last thing we're going to do is specify the key lifetime. Crypto, ISACAMP, policy 10, lifetime, 86,400 seconds or one day. Just make sure they match on both ends of the connection. That's our phase one stuff. Now let's do the phase two, setting up the tunnel. This time, instead of using ISACAMP, we're going to use IPsec. So crypto, IPsec transform set ESP dash 3 des dash SHA. That is simply a text string identifying the transform set, naming it. You could call it Billy Bob or whatever you want to. Um, I, again, prefer to use descriptive names. So now we'll specify what we're going to use, the different uh, technologies that we'll use. We'll use ESP, that is the encapsulating security payload. 
which is really the only one you can use. Authentication header is also used in, in IPsec, but it doesn't work with NAT uh, for reasons that I'm not going to get into here. It's covered in the book if you want to know more about it, but we'll just use ESP and we'll use it with uh, 3DES. So 3DES. And then our hashing uh, message authentication code will be SHA. So ESP SHA HMAC. That's our transform set, which we will reference later on. Now let's map the crypto map to the access control list. So crypto map outside underscore map one match address outside underscore one underscore crypto map. Now uh, that crypto map outside map. That means the outside map is the name of the crypto map. One is just a sequence number within the crypto map. And if you don't specify a different one, it simply appends each line to the previous line. Match address outside underscore one underscore crypto map tells it to use the access control list that we configured right up here, as you'll recall from earlier. All right, so next we're going to tell it to use perfect forwarding secrecy, which randomizes TCP sequence numbers, adding another layer of security. So crypto map outside underscore map one set PFS group one. Notice there's no space between group and one, and it will error if you put a space there. Next, we're going to identify our peer at the other end of the connection. You thought we'd already done that with the tunnel group, but we also have to do it with the crypto map. So crypto map outside underscore map one set peer 192.168.0.12. That is our peer. That's something that's already configured. Next, we're going to go in and tell the crypto map which transform set to use. So we're going to reference the transform set that we configured earlier, the one we did right here. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So let's do crypto map outside underscore map one set transform set ESP dash three des dash SHA. And finally we're going to apply the crypto map to the outside interface with the command crypto map outside underscore map interface outside. So that's our phase two configuration. We have two more steps. We have to configure NAT and this is really no NAT. So this is going to tell the firewall not to NAT the traffic that is destined from our local subnet to our remote subnet. We don't want it to go out onto the internet, in other words, and it's weird syntax. So just follow along. If you're looking in the book, it'll be helpful, but if not, here's how to, here's how to do it. NAT, inside, outside, one source static, NAT-local, NAT-local, destination, static, net dash remote, net dash remote. Like I said, it's pretty weird syntax. And finally, we have to configure a default route. Now you may be thinking, gee, this is point to point. Why do we need a default route? Because if you don't do it, it won't work. Don't you love answers like that? So route outside 0, 0. 192.168.0.1 or whatever your default gateway is. Now we'll go ahead and hit enter and in a moment we should see the ping responses come back from our partner on the other end of the connection. And there it is. Mm -hmm.